May the Lord be with you. This is Pastor Ryan over at St. Peter's Lutheran in lovely upstate Minnesota. And I am here with our Faith 5 video for this first week in May. Now, as most of you probably know, uh, the governor of the great state of Minnesota has extended his stay-at-home order until uh, the 18th of May. And uh, in many ways, this is disappointing. We long, especially your pastor longs, to gather again in Jesus' name for word and sacrament. But we continue this quarantine, this Eucharistic fast, out of love for neighbor. In the meantime, we are, as you may know, pushing uh, our, our online presence into new horizons. We're aiming for videos uh, multiple times a week. Uh, personally, my aim is a video for each day the office is open, which is Sunday through Thursday. You'll find them on Facebook, on YouTube, and you can go to my blog. Links are over on our page for transcripts of all of our sermons, articles, etc. Also, of course, you are still welcome to come and celebrate Holy Communion with me uh, as, as a family or as individuals, small groups, no greater than 10. Uh, we will respect social distancing. And, of course, I'm also here for confession, absolution, what have you. Now then, Faith 5 Devotional is shorthand for the hope that each and every day of the week we might take just five minutes out of our schedule at the end of the day to share with friends or family the highs and lows of our day, to read a little bit of scripture like the readings we put on our Facebook page each morning, or that could be found in the back of our hymnals here at church if you want to come grab one. You're more than welcome to borrow one. And then we would talk about how those scripture readings might relate to the highs and lows of our day, ending with a mutual prayer and blessing so that we may go in peace, having shared a little bit of faith and scripture and prayer and community as a family out and about each and every day of the week so that um, our religion might truly be one in the home. Now, the readings for each week prepare us for the proclamation of the gospel on Sunday morning. And our gospel reading for this upcoming fifth Sunday of Easter is the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, a few uh, quick thoughts regarding the Gospel reading. First up, this is Jesus at his pastoral best, isn't it? He knows he's going away, uh, but he assures us that the relationship continues. When he says there are, there are many dwelling places in my Father's house, uh, the word there is, it's not just rooms, it's places to abide, places to dwell, places where um, you're still part of the household, where the relationship is still firm and true and lived out. When Jesus ends uh, this dialogue here, um, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. 
That's a dangerous little quote, isn't it? Um, it is akin to, uh, I think, magical thinking, or at least we tend to interpret it that way. God, of course, is not a genie granting wishes. You can't say, in Jesus' name, I want that parking space. Um, in, in Jesus' name, I want to lose 30 pounds by tomorrow. In, in Jesus' name, I want a million bucks. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. When Jesus is talking about doing things in his name, he means that uh, we are to be Christ for our neighbor, be Christ for the world. We are, we are to continue his mission amongst all of humankind and all of creation. And that means that whatever we do in the name of Christ, by the will of Christ, the work of Christ, he will be with us always. And he will accomplish his will because his will is, in fact, his Father's will. So we aren't to imagine that Jesus is our personal Alexa, right? You know, Alexa, play the party mix. Doesn't work that way. He's the master, not the servant. Rather, um, we are to have faith that he is with us. And in all that we do, all the good that we do in his name, he will see us through. He will accomplish in us the will of his Father, even in spite of us. Now, the bit about, you know, I am in the Father, the Father is in me, this reflects the central mystery of the Christian faith. Not that there is one true God. Lots of religions believe that there's one true God. In fact, I would argue that every major religious system and philosophical system is either monotheistic or monotheist compatible. But what makes Christianity unique, what makes Christianity, in fact, scandalous, is the idea that the one God becomes one of us in Christ Jesus, so that he is both God and yet from God. And how that might work has tied great brains in knots for centuries, indeed, for millennia. The most helpful, if not explanation, then illustration, let's say, that I've come across is um, from the, the tradition of Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas says, God is not a mind in the way that we have minds. Our minds are, are limited, are fallible. But God is more like a mind than anything we encounter here below. And if God is truly all-knowing, omniscient, then God perfectly knows himself. Now, each of us has an image of ourself in our own minds. Each of us has a little mirror that we hold up, uh, th that we think we are. Now, in, in you and I, because uh, we have squishy little monkey brains, our own self-image is imperfect. It, it's almost uh, an idol. It's either too good or, or, or too bad, depending on how we feel about ourselves. It's not a perfect image of who we are, but it's as close as we can get. In the mind of God, the image is perfect. He knows himself fully and completely. He loves himself fully and completely. And so there is within the mind of God an image of God's self. And since it's a perfect image, it is doing exactly what God is doing. It is God. This is what Christians, and not to mention uh, Jews and Greek philosophers, talk about when, when we're talking about the logos, the image of God, the logo of God, if you will. Um, that's who we believe Jesus is. Jesus is God's own image born as a human being. Everything that God the Father is in his infinity and his eternity, Jesus is a perfect reflection of that in space and in time. That's why we say he is both fully human and fully divine. That's why he says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If you know me, you know God who God really is, what God really does. There are many glimpses of God in the world. There are many false idols, imperfect reflections of God in our history and indeed in our faith. But the one perfect image of God, the one who never fails, the one who shows us the very heart 
of the Father is Jesus Christ. You know, when people say that he's the Son of God, uh, we imagine, I think, uh, you know, how, how Hercules is the son of Zeus, right? Or are many of the Norse gods are the, are the sons of Odin and Thor. But that's not what we mean by God, is it? In monotheism, God is not one powerful being among many. God is being itself, with a capital B. He is not one being within creation. He is the creator beyond creation. That age-old question, well, who created God? God invented space and time. There is no before God. He is the uncaused cause that makes all other causes and effects possible. No matter what you imagine God to be, God is always greater. God is always infinitely more. So how can we know God, really know him? Only by him reaching out to us. By God coming down when we could not go up. That's who Christ is for Christians. That's why we can worship a man and say in, in all honesty and truth, we worship God. We could get into all kinds of uh, gobbledygook about the Trinity and what have you, but the bottom line is, in the words of the Savior himself, how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father. And the Father is in me. Jesus, you can always, always trust. Even, even when you can't trust the church, even when you can't trust the Bible, because there are some parts in there that will curl your toes, you can always trust that Jesus is the heart of God the Father. If you learn nothing else in, in all of your Christian faith, then, you know, in the words of Martin Luther, uh, apart from this man, I have no God. That is enough. If you have Jesus, you have God. Now and forever. This is his promise, our hope, our joy, our resurrection. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and thanks be to God.